Satan's Witch. Victoria Temple. This is part 5 of Sign of the Times series. The magic book transported me through time once again. I was losing hope that it would ever send me home to 2020 where I belonged. This made me worry. My parents would be so worried that I was gone. They would think that I was kidnapped and something very bad had happened to me. They would probably think that I was dead. They would never know that I was being thrown around in history. I imagined mom and dad grieving about me and missing me every day. Now it seemed as if I was in some dark courtroom. The people looked like they were pilgrims at Thanksgiving. I was wearing a long dress with an apron and had a bonnet on my head. I had a wooden cross necklace. I looked around at the people in the courtroom. They were not working or doing what they had done in their daily lives. They thought what was happening here in the courtroom was important. It could also be because they had no TV, so this was entertainment for them. A woman was being tried as a witch. Everyone was accusing her of all the bad things that happened to them. If this was true, then this woman would have been very busy. She was accused of making a lot of people sick, even women that had miscarriages. She was accused of the fact that there was no rain for ages and the farmers were worried about their crops. I knew that none of this could be true, but the people in the courtroom were angry. They thought that this woman sold her soul to the devil and was doing his work. I was confused and in shock. How could these people believe in witches? The woman was found guilty and sentenced to death on the stake. She was dragged out while screaming that she was innocent and believed in Jesus. As she was tied to the stake, a stern old priest shouted at her to repent her sins and to deny Satan. The woman was hysterical by now and was still insisting that she was not a witch. Some men lit the fire and all we could hear was her screaming. I could also hear her praying until the only sound was the fire burning. Luckily the smoke was so thick that we could not see her being burnt alive. I do not think I will ever forget the screams. I have experienced a lot of evil and mean things in my time travels and this was one of the most inhumane things I experienced. My family took me home. We lived on a small farm and lived in a very small cottage. My mother was a plump lady that did not smile. While my father looked very old and tired. He smiled and seemed very jolly. I also had an older sister. This wasn't bad as I always wanted an older sister and she reminded me of the sister I had when I was a cave girl. Maybe this family would not be so bad. As mom and dad were doing some things in the house, I sat outside with my older sister. I found out that her name was Maria. I also found out that she talked a lot. I could not get a word in. She talked about her dreams. Maria was tired of the strict life we had at home and wanted more than what a small farm could offer her. I could see that my sister was very spirited and knew how to have fun. She wanted romance and adventure. This made her very interesting and I loved listening to her. Maybe she was a dreamer and would never escape the life she was destined to in this small town, but ambition and dreams were what made us human. I also found out it was 1693. I do not know how long we spent talking, but mom came and told us that it was time to do our chores. I was responsible for feeding the chickens and collecting the eggs from the hens. Then I had to help clean the cottage and help prepare food for supper. This is one thing I would learn about living in 1693, there was no time for play or to be idle. There was one chore after another. We were like servants. I could understand that Maria wanted to escape all this. One thing about constant chores is that when we went to bed, we nearly slept straight away. We were so tired. Amazingly, I could sleep. The images of the burning at the stake and the screams from the woman plagued my mind. It was easy to blame someone when things did not go well. It was easy to say someone was a witch. 
They could not prove that they were innocent. It was hard for me to have the mindset of a girl that lived in 2020. I could never convince anyone that there were no such things as witches. I was only a child and they would never listen to me. I just hoped that I would not experience such inhumanity again, I had to wait until the magic book transported me to a better time. We had to get up very early. We had a quick breakfast where mom scrubbed my face after. This hurt a lot as she scrubbed so hard. She was not gentle either when she fixed my hair. She tugged at it and didn't care if the brush tore half my hair out. She would tell me that a clean child is a godly child when I complained. After she fixed my hair so that it looked nice, she covered it with a bonnet. This was another thing I noticed in 1693, every inch of my body was covered. Dad was not in a good mood. He was worried as it had not rained yet. It was an unusual summer that was very hot and it had not rained for a few months. This would worry any farmer, as they would wonder if their crops would die. If this happened, then how could he provide for his family? I wanted to console Dad somehow and make him smile. I asked him what I could do to help. He smiled at me and told me to pray and be one of God's angels and not be tempted by the devil. This was not that hard to do. I had no intention of becoming the devil's friend. I could not misbehave either, as all the chores kept me so busy. I hugged Dad, as I was hugging Dad, I could see his face become one that showed fear and he pushed me off of him. When I turned around, I could see the priest that was in the courtroom. He was a tall skinny priest that was completely bald. He looked very stern and it must have been decades since he last smiled. The only thing that I could think about was that he looked scary. It was as if he was from a horror movie. Spare the rod and spoil the child, the priest said, your daughter does not need hugs. This bodily affection will just spoil her and corrupt her. It is your duty as parents to discipline her and keep her from the claws of Satan himself. You must make her a good Christian. She must learn to be obedient and hard-working. She must learn her place in God's plan, where she will one day subdue herself to a husband and give birth to the next generation of Christians. Yes, you both have a responsibility to raise your children as the church expects. Beware that spoiling them will just make them easy prey for the devil himself. I was speechless. How could affection and the love a parent can give spoil and destroy me? My real parents never spanked me or hurt me in any way. They gave me lots of hugs. They wanted me to be a happy and secure child. This priest wanted me to be raised in fear so I would be submissive and not have a mind of my own. This must explain why mom always was so strict and never showed any love. It was sad that she had to go through life without smiling and showing her feelings. I do not think that Jesus himself wanted children to live in fear with no love and affection. How would we ever know the love of Jesus if we never experienced love and compassion? Even in the Bible, Jesus always loved being with children and being like a kind loving dad. The priest was not finished. He asked me to name the seven deadly sins. I had no clue what he was talking about so just looked down at the ground. I whimpered that there were bad sins and worse sins. This made him so mad as he accused me that I was neglecting my studies. Mom was not happy about my ignorance either and told the priest that she would make sure that I would know them by the end of the day. This seemed to please the priest. He had done his job. He exhibited his status and power during the visit. When he went, Mom instructed Maria and me to sit. Then she recited the seven deadly sins and told us to keep reciting them while we have done our chores. She would ask us before supper and if we did not know them, we would be going to bed hungry. She explained that fasting also cleansed the soul. You two are very young, she explained and I will not let Satan corrupt you. He will make you lazy and do immoral things. 
you will end up in hell, where Satan and the demons will torture you for eternity. You will burn for eternity and be in constant pain and agony. This is a punishment for God because you were not a good Christian in this world. Listen to your elders and be obedient. This is your path to heaven. I did all the chores that day and tried to remember the seven deadly sins. When it was my turn to recite them, I could not remember them. In my defense, I did not understand what half of them meant. It was no use to explain this as I was sent to bed without anything to eat. I cried myself to sleep. I was hungry and I did not want to be in this time period. The early modern period seemed to be one of religious fear and fanaticism, as well as being so strict, that it was illegal to smile or have fun. I wanted to go home. All I could think of was a nice pizza followed by ice cream. Dad found me crying and gave me an apple. He told me not to worry. He would do penance later. Mom was not happy with me. Then again, when was she ever happy with me? I had never seen her smile yet. Her way of raising a child was to discipline us with fear and punishments. After being sent to bed without any dinner, I did not smile the next morning. I do not think Mom even cared. It was most likely that she thought being happy and smiling was not what God wanted. In a way, I felt sorry for her. It must be hard for her to go through life without seeing the beauty of it, and always thinking that the only way to God was by sacrifice, penance, and being afraid. Mom was doing my hair for the day. I did not understand why she spent so much time making my hair pretty as it would be covered with a bonnet. This time was different. She was tugging at my hair and feeling my scalp. She did this for some time. At first, I thought that she was looking for lice or something like that. This was not the case. She told me that she was checking to make sure that I had no horns. She explained in a serious voice that she was afraid that I was in Satan's army when I could not recite the deadly sins. Then she informed me that we would be going to town today, and I would be helping her to shop. On our way to town, Mom was telling me that we had to be careful with what money we had. It had not rained for months and she was worried about how the family would survive. There was a marketplace in the town with stalls where people were selling everything from vegetables to animals. The atmosphere was exciting as it was fun watching people explore what was being sold. They also tried bargaining for a lower price. At times, they would be shouting so high that I thought there would be a fight. Mom was not in a good mood. She complained that the prices were going up and up, so it would be hard to feed the family. Mom thought it was a sin that people would increase their prices when other people could not afford them. I did not respond or say much, as I knew nothing about the value of money and the hardships people had. While Mom was bargaining with a woman, I noticed a small girl that was sitting in the muddy street. She was dirty and her hair was a mess. She wore dirty and worn out clothes. She was begging for food or a few coins. I felt so sorry for her. I wondered if she had a family or if she was alone and homeless. The saddest thing was that people just scowled at her as they walked by her. One woman even slapped the little girl's face and told her she should not be begging and bothering God-fearing people. This confused me, as I remember from the Bible that Jesus showed compassion for the homeless and the sick. This made me want to go over to the girl and become friends with her. I wanted to take some food that mom just purchased and give it to her. Mom had seen me staring at the girl and pulled me away. She said that it was time to visit the church. The church was an old brick building and looked like any other church. It was a bit dark and it was cool as if it had air conditioning. My mother knelt and prayed. She also found time to tell me to concentrate and pray. I should be asking God for mercy and to repent my sins before it was too late and I would spend all eternity in hell. I found it strange that my mom never thought that God was a loving God. 
she prayed and was religious because she feared him. The grumpy priest came into the church and greeted my mom. When he looked at me, he had a face of disgust. It was obvious that he did not like me. I wondered did he like anyone. Your daughter is beautiful, he stated. I was about to take this as a compliment until he continued, I notice that her hair is braided and it clearly says in the Bible, 1 Timothy 2 9, that women should adorn themselves with respectable attire, and not braided hair or gold. Your daughter's beauty will be used by Satan himself. When she gets older, she will lure honest men to lust and sin. She will be a Jezebel and a whore for Satan. She will be the cause that so many honorable men will be sent to the fires of hell. You as her mother can stop this. Otherwise, you will also be in hell for all eternity. I could not believe my ears. Was it a sin because mom braided my hair? It was nice that he thought that I was pretty. I could not understand how it would be a sin. I had no plan of fancying any boy and having a boyfriend was something I would think about for years. Being pretty could not be a sin, as I never decided if I would be pretty or not. It was how I was born. Besides this, were we not created in the image of God? If God made us pretty, then it was a gift. The grumpy priest did not know God. It did not matter what you looked like on the outside, it mattered what was in your heart. It was soon time to go home. Mom met this woman she knew. She told me to sit on a bench outside the church while she gossiped with this woman. I bet she was telling the woman about what the priest said and that she checked my scalp for horns. I could see the other woman looking at me with a strange judging look on her face. As I looked around, I could see that everyone was dressed the same. It was as if they were in some thanksgiving play. Someone was being punished in a pillory. Some people were around him and throwing rotten fruit at him. Then I noticed the homeless girl that was sitting close to me. I started talking to her which seemed to surprise her. She told me that she is now homeless and an orphan. She once lived on a farm with her mom and dad. Her family did not have enough money as it did not rain for a long time. They were evicted from the farm. Her dad disappeared because he was so ashamed. This meant her mother and her were beggars. Things got worse when her mother became ill and died. She was buried in the pauper's grave, without friends and family that would say goodbye to her. Now the girl was forced to live as a beggar. She had no home and depended on people's generosity. I felt sorry for her. Some nice family could have adopted her or given her shelter and food. She could not take care of herself. What would happen to her when the winter came? How could anyone survive when it was so cold? I heard mom calling for me and I rushed by her side. I told her about the homeless girl and the pitiful situation she was in. I went as far as to ask mom could we give the poor girl some shelter and food. She could help on the farm. Mom snapped back at me and told me that the girl was being punished by God. Most likely her parents were sinners and judged by God to be punished this way. I tried telling mom that she was homeless because of the draft that everyone was experiencing destroyed their livelihood. This made mom squeeze my hand in anger and tell me that I was just told that the girl was being punished and I had no right to question my parents' wisdom. Mom also warned me not to speak with the girl again. When I got home, I did the chores that I had. The homeless girl and her situation were worrying me. I was lucky, as I had a home and I had food. The chores were hard but nothing compared to the life of a homeless girl. I did not even ask her for her name. This made me feel ashamed, as part of me must have thought her name was not important. The farmers were struggling because there was no rain and this meant that many families could be evicted. I hoped that the chores would take my mind off the girl. Even when my sister was trying to cheer me up by doing funny things, I kept on thinking about the girl. 
Mom shouted at me and told me we needed to have a serious talk. I was worried that she would say that the chores were not done to her standards. Maybe she wanted to talk about the homeless sister. She did not want to talk about these things. The priest sees something in you that I do not, she stated, he thinks that your beauty is a gift from Satan himself. I am worried that Satan already has you in his evil army. I want you to answer me truthfully. Have you ever met Satan and spoken with him? Have you sold your soul to him? Have you worshipped him and promised him your loyalty? I was shocked at these questions. I was only 11 years old and mom was thinking that I was a Satanist. I admit that I was no angel, but I did not consider myself to be a bad girl either. How could a mother accuse her daughter of being a follower of Satan and all his demons? I started crying and trying to convince mom that I loved God. I also wanted her to love me. I think this was a lost cause as it was obvious that mom did not love me. I went out to the chickens and prayed to God to send me back home to my normal time. I was tired of time travel and did not want to be in a place where there was no love. Dad found me and told me to get on his back. He walked around the farm with me on his back, he joked and said that he was now my horse and he would take me to heaven where I could play with all the angels. Soon we were joking and laughing. I was having so much fun. It was a long time since I laughed so much. Mom got mad when she saw us and told me that it was wrong what we were doing. Dad tried to defend ourselves by saying that we were only having fun. He told Mom that life was too short to always be bitter and afraid. Mom did not want to discuss this and I was sent to bed once again without anything to eat. Despite that I was frustrated and mad, I said a prayer to Mom that she would find some sort of happiness and love me. The next day, we woke up early as we had to go to Mass. Dad told us that we should pray for rain as the land needed it. I could see that Dad was very worried. Mom told us that there must be witchcraft involved. Some witch in the town had cursed everyone with no rain. When we found out who the witch was and burned her at the stake, then it would rain. Dad was not so sure about this and argued that it could just be a punishment from God. We could please God by repenting for our sins and living as if we were saints. I wanted to explain that it could just be a bad year and there was no rain because of nature. It does not have to be because of a curse or a punishment from God. I decided to remain silent. Mom hated me enough and would hate me more if I questioned her. The priest was grumpy as usual. He shouted from the pulpit, Think what it would be like to be burned all over your body and to have the burning go on forever and ever. In hell, the fire never dies, and the pain never subsides. This is hell and where sinners end up. There is a curse hanging over this town. A curse that has meant that there has been no rain. Our crops are failing, our animals are dying. Hear my words, there is a witch or a coven of witches in this town that does the devil's work by bringing suffering to this town. A dark shadow of evil is covering this town. We must find any witch and send them back to hell, where they belong. The priest wanted a witch hunt, he wanted us to accuse each other of being a witch. The problem was that the congregation believed everything that he said. When Mass was over, my parents were talking with the priest. I spoke with the homeless girl and found out that her name was Jane. We started talking and joking. Then she got serious and said that no one spoke with her, as they thought she was being punished by God. I told her that we could be friends, and this made her smile. Then I heard Mom shouting. Mom dragged me through the town as she called me a disobedient brat of a child. She was mad because I spoke with Jane, the homeless girl. Mom thought that she was homeless as a punishment from God for some sins that she had done or even because her parents sinned. I was frustrated with Mom's attitude. It was so old-fashioned. This thought nearly made me laugh as I realized that of course, it was old-fashioned. 
The year was 1693. I suppose my mom was thinking as any other person would think at this time. She dragged me home and told me to sit on a stool in the small cottage we lived in. Mom was still very upset that I disobeyed her. It was a sin that I broke the fifth commandment to honor your mother and father. Then she thought that I have sinned because I talked with a sinner. I wanted to scream and discuss it with mom. This homeless girl needed our help and compassion, and not our judgment. I wanted to tell her that God was not a mean God who punished us and that we should not be afraid. I knew whatever I said would land on deaf ears. Mom was very mad and she was getting madder at every second as she screamed and shouted at how bad I was. Then she demanded that Dad came in. Mom wanted Dad to whip me and make sure that obedience was beaten into me. This terrified me as I was never spanked in my life. I started crying and getting hysterical I promised that I would behave. I would do every single thing that my parents told me to do. I was certain that I would spank. Dad never stood up to Mom and often escaped to work on the farm when Mom was too much for him. He looked at me, and then told Mom that no child of his would ever be spanked or whipped. He believed that violence did not lead to everything. Dad looked at my mother and said in a stern voice, Maybe you should start showing this child love and compassion and not hate her the way you do. She needs a mother that loves her and does not hate her. Why do you not tell her now that you do love her? Mom just grunted and told me that she thought that I was corrupted by some demons, and possibly even Satan himself. Then she went off in a rant that there still must have been a witch in town. The lack of rain must be a curse by this witch. This made Mom tell us who she thought was a witch. I think, in the end, she must have named half the women in town. This worried Dad, as he warned Mom that she had to keep her accusations to herself. Otherwise, her accusation could lead to an innocent person being burned at the stake. I noticed that Mom did not tell me that she loved me. All she can say was that she thought that I was being influenced by the evil one. I knew that Mom did not love me and this hurt me a lot. The fact was that Mom did not love anything. She was bitter and afraid. This was sad. My sister wanted to cheer me up, so she suggested that we went swimming. We stripped down to our undergarments, which still covered every bit of skin. We swam in a small pond on the farm. This was so much fun and we ended up giggling as we splashed water at each other. My sister told me that she believed that God did not want us to suffer and be unhappy and afraid of Him. He gave us a beautiful world that we should not be afraid to use. I nodded my head and splashed her with more water. I was having a lot of fun, but I knew that something bad will happen. The magic book always sent me to a place where I would be in trouble. Why did the magic book not send me back to my time with my real parents? Mom found us and was very mad. She thought that it was a disgrace that we were swimming in our undergarments. She ordered us to go back home. When we were home, she started scolding us and calling us names that I won't even write here. I have never seen Mom so mad as she yelled and contemplated how we would be punished. At one stage, she fell to her knees and asked God what she did to be punished by having two daughters that had no modesty. She thought that my sister and I wanted to corrupt everyone. I was crying as I was afraid of what Mom would do and I did not like she was so mad. My sister put her arm around me and got mad at Mom. She told Mom to stop scaring me. This only made Mom angrier. Mom told us that she should cut all our hair off. It would stop us from corrupting anyone that we see. She told us to go to bed and to pray to God for forgiveness. We would get nothing to eat. Fasting would cleanse our souls. I did as mom said, and went to bed. For some reason, I quickly fell asleep. Maybe it was that sleeping was the only escape I had from the trauma and the fear. I never remember my dreams 
but I am sure that they were good ones, where I was with my real parents in 2020. The next morning, Dad woke me up. He asked me did I know where my sister was. I got up and helped Dad look all around the farm. She could not be found. I told Dad what happened the day before and Mom wanted to cut all our hair off. My sister must have been afraid and wanted to hide until Mom calmed down. Dad sighed and asked if my sister did not realize that he would not allow this to happen. Mom did not help us look for my sister. She was mad that she was hiding. Mom was sure that this was proof that my sister was guilty. Dad ignored what Mom was saying. As for me, I was afraid of Mom and stayed close to Dad. I suspected that Mom would take all her anger out on me and I needed Dad to protect me. After we ate lunch, my sister came back to the farm. She also had two guards from town with her. They were well armed and looked very serious. They told Mom that she was under arrest and tied her up and led her away. Everything happened so fast that I was crying. I was confused and afraid. I heard Mom scream that she was innocent and she was a God-fearing woman. The guards just dragged her away to the cells. I hid in the chicken coop trying to understand what had happened. Dad found me there and told me that my sister accused Mom of being a witch. This confused me. What daughter would accuse her mom of being a witch? I know she was not the nicest of people. She never smiled. She was strict and I doubted that she loved us. This was no excuse to accuse her of something that she was not. Dad said that the situation looked very bleak. Being accused of being a witch was a death sentence. It would mean torture or even the drowning test. If this happened, Mom would be thrown into the river. If she floated, she would be guilty of being a witch. If she sank, then she would be innocent. This test seemed so bizarre. There seemed to be no hope for a person that was accused of being a witch. No matter what happened, they would be doomed. When I did see my sister, I got mad at her. I told her it was very mean to accuse her mom of being a witch, and possibly would be the worst thing that she had ever done in her life. It was the same as murder because she knew that mom was innocent. My sister shrugged her shoulder and just mumbled that our mom would never punish us or make our lives hell again. She would be punished for not loving us. It was as if I was talking to a wall. I could not convince my sister that this was wrong to do. She must have thought I was annoying, as she said that maybe I was also a witch, for supporting a witch. I rushed into town and found where mom was kept. It was a pit in the ground. It looked so dark, damp, and cold down there. I tried speaking with mom and asking her if there was anything I could do to help her. There was no answer. I tried telling mom that none of this was my fault. I did not think she was a witch. I wanted her home. Despite I said all this, she did not respond. It did not even help when I told her that I would be obedient and do everything she said. The only response I got was that she did not want to speak with me. I was the only person she did not want to speak with. She told me to leave her alone. In a family that was so Christian, and God was so important, why was there so much hatred? The members of our family never showed love for each other. This was the cause of the destruction of the family. It was obvious that mom hated me. I was even threatened by my sister. The only person that showed love was dad, and he was as powerless as I was. Hatred is a strong force that consumes people's souls and only leads to darkness. The grumpy old priest was suddenly there and grabbed me by my arm. He told me that he knew that he knew there was an evil force in my family. Now it was my duty to prove that my mother did not conceive me with Satan as my dad. It was my duty to prove I was not Satan's daughter. This meant that I had to testify that mom was a witch and a servant of the devil himself. I did not answer him. To be honest, 
I thought he was creepy and was afraid of him. The day came when it was time for mom's trial. It was the same as the day that I was sent to this time. People were crowded in the courtroom and jeering at mom, calling her the worse of names. Mom was shouting that she was innocent. She always was a God-fearing woman that wanted nothing to do with Satan. Witnesses were brought forth. They testified that they heard that Mom had cursed the town with no rain. One person even testified that when it was a full moon, she took the shape of the demon and flew over the town, making people sick and even die. Another person said that they saw Mom eat frogs and insects. One old woman has seen my mom kissing Satan in a pool of blood. These were of course all lies and some people had a good imagination. The worst testimony was from Jane, the homeless girl. She told everyone that mom did not allow me to show any charity, and she could see mom's eyes turn red as fire as she prohibited that I helped her. My sister testified that mom wanted to sacrifice us to the devil. She said that she saw mom summoning Satan to our cottage when we were doing chores. My sister said that she had even seen mom's horns. This was ridiculous. It was all lies. People just wanted to make up things so they would see someone being burned at the stake. This was some cheap and wicked form of entertainment. I could not keep quiet. I shouted that mom was not a witch. She never talked with Satan and she did not have horns. She believed in God and even took me to church. If there was any presence of the devil, it would be here in the courtroom, where everyone wanted an innocent woman to be burnt at the stake. My sister was now upset and told everyone that I was also a witch. She saw mom tell me how to curse people and she also saw mom tell me how to hide my horns. Then the old priest testified that he knew that I was conceived after mom and Satan were intimate with each other. This means that I was more than a witch. I was Satan's flesh and blood. The big surprise was when mom admitted that I was Satan's daughter. Why would she even say this? Maybe it was because she hated me so much and knew that she had no hope of getting a fair trial. The crowd held me and dragged me out to the stake. I was tied to the stake on top of some wood and dry bushes. As the priest was saying prayers, the sky became black and it started to rain. People were shouting to burn me. When the fire was lit, I was very afraid. Black smoke surrounded me. The magic book worked and I was sucked up in the air and thrown through time again. This time, I ended up in a place where I was sitting on a chair drinking lemonade. A black boy was serving me cake. To be continued in. Sign of the Times Skin